All right, look, I'm going to tell y'all about some crazy stuff that happened with this crazy group. One of the things that I'll never, ever forget is when um, <laughs> we're doing a show. I don't remember the, the club we was at, but we're doing a show. And Tony has two girls in the audience. He's scared to go to one side of the stage because if this girl sees if this girl sees him paying attention to her, she's going to know that he got another girl there. So he's trying to stay neutral, but he's killing our show because we need him to be Tony Robinson, the lead singer. You feel me? So he's walking. He's staying on the right side, trying not to give any, anybody in attention, any attention. And then one of the girls, I'm not sure what happened, but I think one of the girls found out one of the girls was there and Tony left the stage, went into the bathroom, didn't come out. The show was taken. We needed to start and we couldn't start the show because Tony was doing some crazy stuff in the bathroom. Not nothing crazy, but, you know, just trying to hide out. I still to this day don't know what was going on or how it ended. I just remember we was all like, where the hell is Tony and what is Tony doing right now? That's that's one of the crazy stories that happened in L.A. Like when we were on the stage. OK, um, one of the one of the things that I'll never forget. And when I was in that group is the day Chris Tyler left the group. It was crazy because I knew it was coming because Chris had met this girl. And if you know Chris, if Chris loves you, it's forever. OK, he met this girl and all the time we was together, he never had a girlfriend. So when he met this girl and said, Shane, this is my girl. It was a wrap every day. That's all I heard was Shane. This this is the one. This is the one. Every time I saw him, he was with her. He was with her. It was crazy. So they started doing their thing and he started doing Christian rap and it was blowing up, doing amazing. So I know he was torn with his heart because his heart was here and his heart was there. So he had to figure it out. And one day he called me and remember this, Chris and I had been friends for the past, for about five or six years already. Me and Chris was together every day. Like we was together every single day. I can't even stress it no more. We went to the same school. We went to the same clubs. We went, we did everything together. So when he said that, because I knew him so well, I didn't get upset. I knew exactly why he was doing what he was doing. I knew it. And when he told me I had already expected it and he was like, I got to go. He said, my heart is somewhere else. And because there was stuff that was going on in the group back and forth, back and forth, Chris was, he was, he was over it. You know what I mean? So I got it. So, but right when that happened, my mind, sh it just shifted. I was like, my boy's going this way. We're going this way. We both got a, a journey and we will see each other again. That was probably one of the most devastating moments, but I, I've been, I'm so conditioned to um, bad luck or bad situations that when it happened, I just controlled it. I just handled it and moved on, but I was hurting inside. And then that's when Donald Varner came into the group. Now, let me tell you about Donald. Donald was like dark skinned, beautiful, buff. <laughs> Everything about Donald was like perfect and could sing his butt off. Like Donald was the type of person that when you have a singing battle or when you have a girl around or when you around somebody that says like, which one of y'all sang? You say, Donald, sing for him. And Donald would out sing everybody in anybody's group or anybody in that room. His natural, his natural voice was so high. Like he had a natural like Michael Jackson. You feel me? He was a grown man. Yeah, that boy was crazy. He took Chris's place. And it was different. It was weird because Donald was a dancer, but he wasn't a dancer. You feel me? He caught on really quick. And I was used to vibing off of Chris because me and Chris would do all the choreography. But um, but Donald came in and did his thing. He actually took us to another level vocally. We had a we had a guy in the group by the name of Marcus Stokes. If you know KC from Jodeci, you know Marcus. Marcus was like that guy that when you wanted somebody to feel what was going on in your life, when you wanted somebody to feel the song, when you want to do a ballad, you gave it to Marcus. Marcus sang so much from his heart and from his soul. I, I remember one time, or I think it's the first time I ever cried around them. They didn't know it though. But um, we was at church with um, a girl that was like managing us. And they had, I forgot what was going on, but the, the sermon was going on. And it was like, is there anybody in here that want to come up and sing something? So 
Marcus raised his hand and said, I'll go sing. And um, when Marcus got up there and sing, I'll never forget when I saw him walking up, you know how you just get this warm, hot feeling in your body and your eyes start to water? Because I already knew Marcus was about to kill it. And Marcus was one of those guys that's very emotional. Like he don't do nothing. When he dance, he dance emotionally. He sings emotionally. Everything is from the heart and it's 100%. So when he was walking up there, I knew he was about to tear the, the building down. So what I'll never forget, I don't know what the song was, but it was something that he either wrote or something that he sang when he was younger. But he got up there and started singing about it. And I remember it said something about there's a house that he lived in um, where, where he used to live. And he, it was talking about his family and what they used to do and da da da. But it was so sick. I wish I could remember it. But he got up there and killed that song. And I swear I never have been so proud and so hype and just so full of like love at, 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 one, at one time in my life, at, like ever, you know, at that time. It was crazy. That was, that was a, a Marcus moment. Let me tell you about Jay Watte. Okay. Our group was cold. <laughs> so, so everything about him is going to be sick. Jay Watte was like, I don't even, you can't even compare nobody. He had a falsetto of the dude from Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. He had uh, the range like a Mariah Carey, but he was a boy. Like, and sexy and tall and just beautiful. Like, James was that other guy that when Donald, when Donald got done, it was like, okay, James, take him to this side of the world. And James would go from just killing. I was like, oh, God damn. Like our group was like that cold. Okay. Then it came to Tony Robinson, T-Rob, the melody, melody maker. Okay. T-Rob was like the Ralph Tresvan. He like followed Ralph Tresvan from the T. He used to... What did, he used to relax his hair. He told me this. I didn't see this. He said, Shane, I used to relax my hair and leave the relaxer in all day because he wanted to be super straight like Ralph Tresman. So we wore the suits. If y'all see any videos, if we were in suits, it was because um, Tony wanted to be like New Edition. And we, so we wore suits. That's why I was like that. Me personally, we'd have been in baggy pants, big old jacket, dark glasses like Jodeci. But we was, we was in that group. So we, you know, Tony was the leader. But Tony was that guy that I don't care where you was at. He had the charisma of a Bobby Brown, a Ralph Tresvant, um, like um, like Tupac. Even though Tupac was just now coming out, he had, he had that type of charisma. When Tony got in front of you, I don't care who you were, you became an instant fan of Cold Premier because that boy could work that stage and he had that Ralph Tresvan voice. You know, he had that, he didn't have that falsetto and all that crazy stuff, but he had that tone and that, that vocal, vocal ability to pull you in and control the crowd. Like we, it was crazy. And I, I'll tell you a little bit about Chris before he left. Me and Chris danced together every single day, okay? Me and Chris was the type that if the song, whatever song came on, we would look at each other. I would do a move. He would do a move. And somehow we would end up doing the same stuff together. Like it was like, you know, how twins talk and say the same thing. That's how me and Chris were. We were like, that was crazy. We would, we would create stuff. Everything we did was from scratch. And that is why it's hard for me to do the nay nay. It's hard for me to do all the dances that everybody do because I never followed anybody. We always created our own dances. We made up the dances that people did. So for me to watch a dance, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start doing what everybody else is doing. It's hard for me to do that. If I have to, or if somebody asks for it in their choreography, I'll do it and I'll be like, okay, let's add it in there. But my mind doesn't think like that. I, I wanna get into, that's a whole nother story. That's my other life I'll tell y'all about. But with me and Chris, we used to, um, we. Chris and I would do all the choreography, and that's where the energy came from. There's a show that we did. I'm going to tell you another funny, this is my best, 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 best story. Um, it was when Jamie Foxx was nobody. He was like nobody. We're, I, I think it was a, the Palladium or Palace or some, some spot in, Hollywood, in North Hollywood, Studio City. Okay, so we about to go on, and there's this guy. Give it up for Cole Premier. And he was telling comedy before that. We was like, that nigga is funny. We was already in the back like, he's a funny dude. So he was like, give it up for Cole Premier. So when he walked back, he was like, nigga, you are funny as fuck. He was like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But he didn't know us yet. Dude, we go out there. We get on stage. We get on stage. And um, first we get out there. We come out in suits. Remember, we're from Cincinnati, Ohio. We're in Los Angeles, California. We come out there in these suits. 
they're looking at us like we're crazy. We stand in a circle, and James Watson's father was in a band back in the day, and they did doo-wop, old school doo-wop. So he taught us this doo-wop song. So we got in a circle together, put our heads together, and instead, five, six, seven, eight, boom, ba doo wop ba doo wop ba doo wop boom, ba doo wop ba doo wop ba doo wop Then the harmonies came in, and James came in, and Tony came in, and that shit started, whoo, it just was like killing the room. By the time we was done, they was standing up screaming like, ah, we was like, oh, they ain't even seen nothing yet. Like, that's just. We would do this, it was the song was called Pump It Hottie, and it was like, Pump It Hottie, and the energy was ridiculous. The crowd went crazy. We did our song, I think we did two or three songs, got off stage, Jamie Foxx came up to us, he was like, man, y'all motherfuckers are cold. He said, cold per me, cold per me. He said, man, I ain't never seen a group like that. He went on for like maybe five minutes talking about like how dope we was. We was like, that's what's up, that's what's up. And then, a uh, the side note, and then years later, I would see him, and he started to blow up. He wasn't as big as he is now, but he was blowing up. And I was like, what's up, Jamie? He was like, hey, what's up? I was like, you remember me? He was like, oh, I was like, cold premiere. He was like, cold premiere. He was like, boy, cold premiere. He said, man, y'all was the baddest group I've ever seen in my life back in the day. And I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, another side note. So, when I started doing America's Best Dance Crew, so you think you could dance, start traveling, start making all this, start just getting famous, basically. I never was able to run into him again. I used to, people used to be like, oh, it's with Jamie Foxx. Oh, it's at Jamie Foxx. I, was, I used to get so mad. I was like, I would love to run into him when we both were successful, but I never did. So that's, that's a sad part, you know? So yeah, so that's, that's my Jamie Foxx story. Um, there's another story that I wanted to tell y'all. Oh, when we did the movie, when we did the movie Class Act. Okay, let me tell you. We are in California, we in Academy Village. Our manager called us and said, they just booked y'all on a movie called Class Sack. Y'all gonna be on the soundtrack singing a song called Body. Um, why she had to wear that body tonight? We was like, what? They said that the song, we was going crazy. Everybody was learning their parts, blah, 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 blah. Somebody else wrote the song. So we learned our parts, went into a big studio, recorded the song, sick as fuck. And then, um, and then it was shoot day. They gave us our clothes. We got picked up in limo. It was, it was crazy. Then they had a premiere. Um, that was when I first met Jada, uh, Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett was like little and she was all skinny and just like a little girl. And um, I remember her walking past me and she had on a jean outfit and we like looked at each other. I was like, that's Jada Pinkett. But that was it. So <laughs> it was like a dope moment. But so we did that movie. That shit was crazy. Um, the movie did really well. It was with Kid and Play. If you've never seen it, go watch it. That's us on the stage in the yellow shirts and black pants doing our little choreography and stuff. So yeah, that's another story. Um, and a sad story is I remember when I was living in California and it was crazy because there was a moment when I was here by myself and I didn't understand what happened. One by one, each member started to go home saying they were going to come back. And in my heart, as much as I love the group Cold Premier, I knew that I realized that that group was a stepping stone for me to get to where I am now. Because in my heart, I was a performer, a dancer. Singing came after that. You feel me? And then that's what gave me the avenue, or I, I took the avenue of picking back up where I started, and that's what dance. And that's when I soared and my career took off. I got a million things I want to say, but there's, a, there's going to be a part two to this, or I'm going to do another story. But I hope y'all enjoy what y'all see. The group Cold Premiere is, it, the group Cold Premiere taught me everything about life. My boy Chris, if it wasn't for him, he was the backbone of the group. I don't know where we'd be at. He, he was the strongest God-believing person I ever met in my life. He was the person that told me that everything in this world, is everything that happened to you is like chapters. He said, look at everything like a chapter when you meet somebody. Um, when you go to school, when you take a new job, when you learn something, he said, look at his chapters. Because when you look back on your life, those are just moments that got, to, got you to where you are. And everybody that you meet is either helping you or taking away from you. So be careful of who you let into your life. I learned all this from Chris, and I apply it to everything that I do now. So if you're watching this, I hope y'all learned something. Cold Premier will never die. Shane Sparks, I'm out. Peace.